This is the story of one of Africa's greatest entrepreneurs. On the 25th of December 1930, a boy named Michael Ibru was born. In eight and a half decades, he made more than just a name for himself. He embedded the Ibru name into Nigeria's culture. His legacy supersedes wealth, as surprisingly what most people seek to emulate from this quintessential businessman was his humility. He was once described as the man with the Midas touch as every business he touched ultimately flourished. This is the story of the Otota of Agbara Kingdom, Olorogun Michael C.O. Ibru, O.F.R. Although he was born in Delta State, his father, the late Chief Pa Ekwete Ibru, was an Urobo missionary living in Lagos, who was a lover of religion and education. He worked as a nursing superintendent at the National Orthopedic Hospital in Igbobi, Lagos. His mother, the late chief, Madam Janet Homotogo Ibru, who descended from a long line of wealthy merchants and political leaders, was a commodities trader in the Niger Delta. With such a background, it is no wonder that he developed and emulated from his parents a love for family, religion, education, and an insight for business. Chief Michael Ibru was the first of seven children. His brothers and sisters are Felix, Bernard, Grace, Goody, Alex, and Mabel. Surrounded by love and support for his six siblings who admired and cherished him, he was a champion for education, as he ensured that all his siblings were well educated. It has been said that Chief's only regret in life was that he, himself, did not attend university. His siblings followed in his successful business and career path. As a Lodogun Felix Ibru, his immediate younger brother had leadership and winning qualities in school that rewarded him later on in life as he became the first democratically elected governor of Delta State. His baby brother, Alex, would become the managing director of Ruta Motors, which eventually led him to become one of the founders and the chairman of the Guardian newspaper. Chief Michael's younger brother, Goody Ibru, received counsel and advice from him, which led to his role as the chairman of Ikeja Hotels and Capital Hotel. He would also become the chairman of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Well, Lord Michael Ibru, he was my big brother, but he's the eldest in the family. He was born in 1930, I was born in 1942. So you can see there's a 12-year gap. My brother was a very noble man. Uh, got a good bill. He's uh, well endowed with intelligence. Uh, was very good looking. He was a charming man. Anybody that met with him immediately made friendship with him. There was a time in 1993 when I was very ill. And my brother came to see me in hospital. I was hospitalized. And um, you can see he was very sad. I remember him saying that it, if it pleased the Almighty God to take his own life rather than take my own life, take his whole life. Because in his reckoning, uh, being much older than me, he should go first to be called by the Almighty God before me, and not the other way around. That really touched me. And I have very fond memory of that sure of love and affection. Olorogun, Michael Ibru's big heart and generosity was not just for his family members alone, as he touched the lives of the men and women not just from his village, Agbaroto, in Delta State, but indeed all over Nigeria. 
As a bright and exceptional youth, Olorogun Michael attended the Gobi College in 1946, which was one of the best institutions in Nigeria. He excelled in academics and completed his six-year education in less than four years. During his time in school, he was appointed as the head boy and was outstanding in football and cricket. After school, he became a trainee manager with UAC. It is believed that this is where his instinctive foresight for business was sharpened. As at 24, his first step into entrepreneurship was to form a trading company called Laibru in conjunction with his English partner, Mr. Jimmy Large. During the mid-1950s, he managed to break into the then untouched market of importing frozen fish into the country in order to alleviate protein deficiency among the Nigerian people. Crystallizing on the distribution of frozen fish with the humanitarian objective of eliminating malnutrition among Nigerian people, he provided Nigerians with a low-priced, high-protein food source and most importantly, he operated a successful distribution network which penetrated densely populated southern regions and extended over 1,000 kilometers towards the Sahara. Ibru Seafoods became the cash cow for the group of companies that would later be known as the Ibru Organization. It expanded into one of the largest indigenous business operations in the whole of West Africa. Taking a further look into the Ibru Organization, one discovers several companies, complex in operations and globally significant. Its transactions and connections spread beyond Nigeria to the rest of West Africa, North Africa, Western Europe, the USSR, North America, the Far East and Australia. But he's always there to ask us that what type of fish do we want? He himself will go to Russia, Poland and other countries to bring that particular fish we ask for. And it's always there for we women. That is why we said, Ejaibu Shoko Yokoto. The size and complexity of the Hebrew organization's businesses necessitated the formation and diversification into several other sectors. Hebrew rapidly expanded into aviation, hospitality, tourism, banking, automobile distribution publishing, pump oil production, and so much more. Chief Michael Ebru created a common garden which continuously blossomed. With investments on land, sea, and air, Chief displayed the talent to direct multi-channeled businesses. It is no wonder that he was appointed as a member of the Economic Cabinet Committee, a member of the African Development Bank, the Chairman of the Nigerian Institute, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and a member of the Nigeria-US Business Council. First, a religious family man, a philanthropist, then a man who wholly invested in other people's lives. Michael Ebru brought on board to his business investment traders and market vendors who could strategically reach a vast population. Here are some employees who remember the early days of his journey. 
whenever we take fish from the salesman, because he made a big table for each and every women in that place, and some men too are there selling. If, we, if the fish is not finished, he made another cold room, a returned cold room, that we, we don't pay. He made another cold room that we will put the return fish in there so that by the next day it will get frozen again. And he will still come back again to ask, how is the market going? Chief Hebrew, ah, the Yoni, to Jaype, to Fermo, to Boya, and to Yoba, I've been a coin robo, I've been a coin Ibo, but we are back on the Boya Yonji, who then shake any coin shiny. To Banshi Sheba, ye, eh, eh, ah, Nasp Colati close. And lolly, King Sagumo Bushiwayan. Cotter, if I think in Sagumo, you put into Vasagumo, and my wag will pay, you let it shoot. Go see, go say for ye, or look at the cold boy, what I bash young by ye. See this scene. And by two, who bad office in by me? Ah, only do sit up near Kuma won't call my office for six hours. Only do my mamma, she said, a little bamboo happy. Raguaja, how about you buy on my drooting, you look at my bere. Session can come on best about only she shall eat for two, three, four hours. You only prune there. Late Olorogo Michael Ebro is a complete gentleman, a lover of human beings. He's a philanthropist, a businessman to the core. He is actually humility personified he's a very humble person whenever he he talks to you he brings himself to your level so that he can get whatever he wants from you he opened an educational trust some time ago and made me the secretary of the educational trust. He offers scholarship to various people, Yorubas, Igbos, Hausas, and Robos. Any person who comes to him for anything, he has no no in his dictionary. If any person comes to him for money, he won't say no money. He will ask me, John, give so so person so so amount without thinking. I was the first employee in 1956. He created employment. He was very concerned about uh, the shortage of protein and our diets, and that pushed him to embark on uh, the fishing business to, to supply that essential commodity. He was a great man in the sense that he was humble, unassuming, and helpful to others. Well, I was the chief's personal assistant and I worked with him for many, many, many years. He was very modest, very, very modest. Um, wherever we went to anywhere, you will, not, you will not be able to pick him out as a person that uh, owns the empire called the Hebrew organization. He was a formidable businessman born with an inner sixth sense for empire building. He was blessed with an acumen to develop any business into a multi-million pound enterprise. Chief Michael Ibru was a loving and devoted family man. His first son, Honome, was born by Nike, popularly referred to as Yatiti, he unfortunately passed away at the age of 19. The Atiti also gave birth to the beautiful Christiana. His son Oscar was born to a half-German and half-Cameroonian lady called Elsie Nelly, 
Nick Krupp. She was fondly known as Kanti, was blessed with five more lovely children, Peter, Emmanuel, Gloria, Obukome, and Elvina. My name is Olorogo Oscar C.J. I happen to be the first son of Chief Michael Libra. My dad was considered to be in the village they used to call him a ghost because they didn't see him, they heard about him. But to me it was just my dad. Uh, the only thing I remember mostly though, when he came home from work, we would say hello and we'd all disappear. As soon as he leaves, we were on the dining table. He was a great, he was a great person. It was lots of fun. He was a disciplined man. The sociable Jero was born to Mrs. Titi Ibro, Ni Olumide now popularly known as the first lady of the banking industry, Cecilia Ibru Nisido had seven children for him. They are Obode, Manemo, Osio, Obaru, Vivi, Tejiro, and Rode, who unfortunately passed away in 2015. Chief Ibru also has another son called Vesere with Dr. Debo Odedino Ibru. And his last child is his son with Olivia Habajo, Gabriel Ibru. At school, I feel like I was driven to do well because of who he was. Whether it be in the classroom or on the sports field, I always wanted to be the best I could be because I knew I'd had numerous other siblings ahead of me. So it was almost like a, to me, a mini competition back in probably about 2000. And and I got into a black taxi in London. The taxi driver happened to be in Nigeria. And so we got talking about Nigeria. Obviously with the topic of corruption came up and we both complained about how things could be better. And the taxi driver stated that, you know, if we could have some more men of integrity, that would be wonderful. And I, as a young person who was still learning about Nigeria, um, I asked him, so which kind of, which kind of names, which kind of people do you think have set the example? And the first name he actually called was Chief Michael Ibru. And that really hit me hard. The Ibru family name and legacy will continue to live on. I'm formerly Ibru, Oscar's first daughter and Alorogun's first grandchild. There's not one particular word that you can use to describe him, but I would say revered is probably a good one. He was uh, legendary, as a lot of people would like to say. He was loved, he was kind, he was firm, he was uh, focused, and he was determined. I just remember being in school and coming home one Christmas holiday, and we hadn't seen each other in a long time. And for the first time in my life, I actually felt like I was talking to the man, not the legend, the man, not the myth. Like I could really connect with him. He was telling me a story about his childhood and how, you know, they had a malam on their street. They used to sell them sweets and they'd run up trees and chase birds and things like that. And as a child growing up in Nigeria, that's something that you can connect with no matter what background you're from. Kids get into all kinds of things. So it just shows you that despite being this very important figure in society and in the business world, on that level he was still human and I could connect with him on that level. Chief Michael Ibru was an exemplary father and devoted husband, ensuring that all his children were loved and cared for unconditionally. Despite his accomplishments, Chief Michael Ibru was an avid believer in modesty and humility as part of his life philosophy, which led him to the divine path that is Christianity. His philosophy was work and let thine works harvest speak for you. His slogan was service in humility.
He was also a quiet philanthropist spreading his bounty to education, rural development and better health for others. He built and donated the Hebrew College to the government in Agbaroto, Delta to aid with the advancement of education in Nigeria. In his birth village, he built the first church, primary school and university. As a practicing Christian before he passed, Chief Michael was generous with his wisdom and wealth. In the church, he was very active. He was always at Bible classes and very good at attending services. He was a regular visitor and very charitable to the church and to individuals, including myself and my children. He was an advocate for entrepreneurship and shared this vision with a number of friends who he had met over the years. My name is Bola Kufuriji Olubi, but um, I'm styled Her Highness the Otumba Ayora, Dr. Bola Kufuriji Olubi. Um, I first met uh, Uncle Michael several years ago, almost, 50, uh, almost five decades ago. And this was at uh, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce uh, occasion. Um, I don't think then that he was a member of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, but he had been invited to come to the chamber because of certain issues that are being discussed and celebrations that. When he saw me, I saw him afar, and I was going to walk up to greet him, but he walked up to me and said, Are you so-and-so? I said, Yes. Oh, nice meeting you formally. Do you know we all live in Apapa uh, together? I said, yes, um, at that time, our papa was styled the millionaire's uh, diary, especially Marine Road. He has the house um, on the same side of Marine Road as I have with water at the back of the house. And it was uh, a, a life of ambience, a life of... Uh, uh, you know, um, of achievement and everything. And uh, I was very pleased that he walked up to me and talked to me. He contributed in no um, quantifiable measure, in great leaps and bounds, to development of business in Nigeria. The fact that his various exploits in business, in the fish industry, in the tires industry, in oil and gas, in other pursuits in business, were going on simultaneously with one another. It was very obvious and pertinent to indicate that he contributed in no uncertain measures uh, to uh, what is going on in Nigeria because when you are a business person and you establish so many businesses you find that you're giving work to a lot of people and in this respect I'm sure those who worked with him like uh, the Osisi Ogus of this world and others you know that I know uh, will be forever grateful to him. Lorugu Michael Ibru was a driving force in Nigeria's economy and he is solely responsible for placing Delta and the Urubu nation on the global map. One other thing that you should ask is that, you know, he, especially coming from a minority part of the country, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he literally put the Urubus on the map, okay, um, in the sense that he was, uh, he was coming from a very minority group, you know, in one of the minority states in Nigeria. And, uh, and that was very significant, you know, to have propelled the rural people. And, you know, we'll continue to follow in those first steps. I met uh, Chief uh, Laura Goma Calibro in 
1992. I remember very clearly because uh, I was still living in the United States of America. I was working there. And uh, I was thinking about transitioning back to Nigeria at some point. My dad, Professor Koloko, insisted that I sat down with at least a pioneer, you know, uh, who's been around for years, which is, of course, Chief Michael Ibu, and have a discussion with him to think about opportunities and where I saw the Nigerian market going in the future. And I had a very interesting conversation with him. He received me very well. And I think we probably sat down for at least three hours where he talked to me about the opportunities in Nigeria, why it was important for me to come back, why it was important for me to also be part of the change going on in Nigeria from a business, commercial and economic standpoint. And uh, I found it very interesting. The chief inspired so many other businessmen who all admired and wished to emulate his philosophy. Chief was able to fully dominate the entire fish market in Nigeria. You know, um, the, almost more than 70% of the fish that was imported into Nigeria was actually dominated by, uh, you know, Chief. Apart from that, he had set up various businesses that actually, you know, I've seen which I say, well, look, you know, I have to really emulate him. Well, if you're not inspired by his success, and his ability to uh, open new vistas for uh, Nigerian businesses. And you know, I, mean, I always recall my late father, who also was quite active, saying, um, and I have to say this in Yoruba, I'm a mic, I'm a rooshi. And you know, for my father to speak of him with such a uh, feeling and uh, respect made a huge impact on me because my father didn't dish out compliments very easily. Olorogun Michael Ibru was influential across all sectors ranging from public to private and was revered amongst all businessmen and politicians alike who turned to him for advice. In 1973, he was honored with the title Olorogun of Agbara Oto and Olomu as well as the Otota of Agbara and shortly after, in 1981, was named an officer of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, O.F.R. When I was in secondary school, at King's College, I was uh, on the cricket 11 in 1947, 48 and 49. And uh, Michael was at a college, and he was on the cricket team as well, at Ibubi. I, I believe he captained the Bobby Cricket team in his last year at school. Uh, so we used to meet uh, at cricket. I left uh, uh, Nigeria uh, within two years of my uh, leaving secondary school. I didn't come back until uh, after uh, five years plus. Now when I returned to Nigeria, uh, I applied for a parcel of land from the Lagos Executive Development Board and I was allocated a piece of land in Surulere uh, at the junction of um, Itire Road and Ogunlana Drive. Uh, I prepared design for a pair of semi-detached uh, houses there and got approval to uh, develop the plot. And I didn't have money to uh, uh, start building a house, having just uh, returned uh, to the country and uh, trying to build up my uh, practice. But fortunately, uh, while I was away abroad, uh, Michael had gone into business and uh, I, I met him just by chance and I told him that I had this problem and he told me he had a, an outlet around the Yimbo, a bus stop, uh, and that he had a cement there and that I could t take all the cement I needed for the construction on credit. Uh, so it was through his intervention that I was able to build uh, that my first uh, a property in Nigeria uh, in January 1979, uh, uh, I was uh, invited uh, by the National Party of Nigeria uh, to be the running mate to uh, uh, present, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, presentation of many large issues Now, uh, the meeting where I was informed of this uh, development was held at uh, uh, Queen's Drive in Koi. 
uh, in one of the properties belonging to, to Michael, which he made available. At that meeting was uh, the grand patron of the party, uh, late Alaji uh, Ali Makaman, Makaman uh, Bida, uh, Makaman Nupe, the uh, chairman of the party, uh, late uh, Honorable Augustus uh, Meredith Adesakinoye, and the uh, presidential nominee himself, Alaji Shagare, three of them were there, and it's uh, uh, bring back nostalgic, nostalgic memory that it was in uh, my friend's uh, uh, house that uh, uh, this decision was taken to. I was informed uh, that uh, the party had decided that I should be the running mate. Our path actually crossed when in 1967 I went to him. My wife came back from UK and um, I was looking for a job for uh, her and I went to Mike and I said, well, I have a problem. Uh, I have a wife who had uh, just returned from UK uh, and I'm looking for a job. And Mike uh, immediately offered her a job. Uh, and from then on, uh, we became friends. The pieces of advice that um, he gave, uh, you see, he, he has become well established in the private sector. And um, when I started to participate in government, first just uh, we, we, we had military government and I was not directly in, but I was on the periphery of the military government. He was one of the people in the private sector that I would go to and say, well, look, Mike, what do you think that we could do uh, in a situation like this? Uh, what would be the, uh, what can we do to uh, uh, give incentive to the private sector? He was not uh, obvious uh, and he was not, uh, he was quiet and he was candid on what he would do or what we should do. And um, uh, I found that extremely, extremely useful. Um, but he didn't think about it. From humble beginnings to a life of legacy, he lived a life of distinguished accomplishments and was unafraid to follow the rare path only traversed by exceptional men. His influence is unquantifiable. His impact is indescribable and his vision to ameliorate the Nigerian nation was miraculous. May his soul rest in perfect peace, knowing that he fulfilled his purpose on earth. I've missed you so much because you've been so good, so loving, so caring. You can't imagine the pain in my heart. Now that you have gained your rest, I wish you perfect peace, laughter, joy, wherever you are in this cosmic world. The Lord will always be with you. And for the good heart that I know you had, you will sit at his right hand. I love him very much and I'm going to be okay. And ever since his, his passing, I feel like he's watching over me. I can feel him and I'm listening to him. Uh, Daddy, I hope 
you were comfortable. I hope we did everything you know, that we could. We wanted to make you as comfortable as possible. And we miss you, and we love you, but now I know, you know, you're well, you're healed, you're total. You're looking down on us. And just thank you. The largest mark, largest contribution to Nigeria and uh, people, and that uh, my hope is that his children and his children's children will carry on from where living off. It's a pity that he did not have the good health to enjoy his uh, his hard work. I would wish him well, but. Unfortunately, it's no more, and um, I wish he had a longer life to enjoy his hard work. He was a very friendly person. He was willing to assist anybody to the basis of ability. Michael Ebro, as a humble man, though very wealthy, should be respected, blessed by God. He was very disciplined, but also it was a lot of fun. Bid you farewell. Um, from what you have done, you deserve all the accolade that will be given to you or that have been given to you because you work hard for it as a man, as a family man, as a businessman, and as a Nigerian, and indeed as a great human being. Chief really is somebody that uh, people should emulate. He was a great person and uh, worthy of emulation. He had set up various businesses that actually, you know, I've seen which I emulate him. My brother was a very noble man. He was a very nice man. Realist, a down to earth man. I've never really had Chief fighting with anybody. In his seriousness and his leadership role, he could also come down to your level very, very happily and very easily. was always ready with advice. Ni ruko beni wa kujari. He never encouraged anyone to shout on any woman. <laughs>